I think, you know, my sense is, is that at TYT, they saw uh, Hassan make uh, a, just a ton of money and have a huge amount of success. And I think there was, you know, in certain uh, parts of TYT, there was resent. And, um, you know, I don't know uh, Anna particularly well. I'm not sure that we've ever actually met in person. Um, well, she's a band, big fan of ours, though, so I'm sure she's watching, Sam. Um, <laughs> but I, I, and I, I get the sense that she's watched our program, too. I think that's really a lot more common than people who, you know, Sam, it, you know, it seems like you've been, I mean, I know for a fact you've been at this a long time. You actually believe that you could have done other things and you decided to put politics first. I feel like a lot of people, they just realize, oh yeah, hey man, a lot of dumb people will watch right wing YouTube and they'll praise me and they'll send me super chats and I won't have to stand on my feet for eight hours a day. I won't have to work in a cubicle. I can be praised all day. And I don't know about you, but Gavin and I've been scratching our heads over here. We're not sure if it's something in the water over in that particular part of California, uh, if we're going to be revealed that, uh, you know, whatever the treatment facility is under some sort of like an Enron scandal of the modern age where the water's just no good at the faucets of the Young Turks network. But we've seen Dave Rubin, who I think fits that description of Tim Pool to a T. And then you have Jimmy Dore, who also, you know, he can't resist. He has to go down the right wing rabbit hole, right? He has to go and humiliate himself. But now... We're seeing a third barrel or a third individual start to circle the drain. And I want to know what you think about it, uh, because Anna Kasparian has recently announced her unalignment from the political left. She said she no longer feels that she can be considered one of us in times like this. And she wants to talk about the real grifters, not Jimmy Dore, not Dave Rubin, not the litany of conservatives. Uh, that are making money hand over fist, defending uh, and rampaging on behalf of the criminal bloodthirsty siege of the people in the Gaza Strip. I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see, Sam. But she says the real grifters are the progressive branded nonprofits that have repeatedly misused public funds. Why won't the left call them out? And she goes on to talk about how she's voting against an increase in taxes for nonprofits to prevent homeless people because she still wants to be able to complain about it as her number one issue in my view uh she says uh, <laughs> i'll be voting no on measure a uh which is to plan to raise another one billion through what she calls a regressive sales uh, tax to build homeless shelters housing and other services so the big grift is taking away money from the hard-earning people like anna and giving it to homeless shelters and other NPO organizations that are interested in combating what is a serious crisis in Southern California. But that's not all. If you go back a little further, you could see her most recent article where she talks about how gangs are taking over Aurora, which is a suburb outside of Denver. I happen to have spent a lot of time in, and I can report back safely that there are no gangs taking over this poor suburban enclave <laughs> as even their Republican mayor notes. So I'm just wondering, what is it that makes people do this ideological pivot in their late 30s? Well, um, and just to add to that Aurora thing, two points. I can't help myself. One, the Aurora thing, it turns out those guys in that video weren't even part of a gang. Uh, that, that video that went viral, apparently uh, coming out of Aurora, I guess it was like a week or two ago, the police said they're not part of a gang. I'm not familiar with Measure A, Although I do think sales taxes, uh, I do have a problem with sales tax being a, a little regressive. I would do a different type of taxation, but I don't think that's her point. Um, the, I, I think, I mean, look, I, I came from this. Uh, I, I came from a world where, you know, I was working with a lot of people who, um, had at when I left that world, you know, at least in terms of professionally, um, had, um, you know, a decent amount of celebrity or fame. And, um, there's obviously in show business, you run into a lot of people who sort of like really want, uh, celebrity and, um, and, 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 and money, of course. I mean, you know, look, I, I, I want to be able to make money. Um, but I think there is, I think 
part of like, I don't know if it's a function of LA, um, to be honest with you, or, um, but part of it is like for people, they get super excited about the celebrity aspect of it and, uh, the money aspect. And it's, you know, you guys know it's hard work. Um, and I think, I think, you know, my sense is, is that at TYT, they saw, uh, Hassan make, uh, a, just a ton of money and have a huge amount of success. And I think there was, you know, in certain uh, parts of TYT, there was resent and, um, you know, I don't know, uh, Anna particularly well, I'm not sure that we've ever actually met in person. Um, well, she's a bad, big fan of ours, though, so I'm sure she's watching, Sam. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I get the sense that she's watched our program, too. I mean, look, I think she, uh, for a long time, has uh, wanted to figure out how she could uh, bust out of, uh, of TYT. Um, I know, oddly enough, that, like, uh, you know, uh, well, she was doing that show with Michael at uh, the Jacobin, and I have a feeling like there was maybe a sense that uh, there'd be more opportunity there mm-hmm. um, if they built out that, that um, you know, uh, I know Michael was go- planning to do a daily show with the Jacobin. Uh, I don't know what part Anna would have played in that, but maybe it was, you know, maybe there was opportunity there. And that was an opportunity for her that obviously uh, uh, didn't exist after Michael passed away. Um, and I imagine there's some frustration and I think like, look, you know, Jimmy did a comedy central special, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, 25 years ago and, um, still has the same jokes if you see him live, <laughs> I, I would have no doubt about it, but I think like, you know, it, he, he, this was a way to revive his career. I mean, I know, uh, Dave Rubin, I, I, I spoke to a writer, whose kid went to the same school as my kid like t- five or 10 years ago. And, um, he said to me like, Oh, Dave Rubin, I wanted to talk to you about this. Dave Rubin would just like harass me to write about him all the time. I think it was just like a real, um, uh, desperation for fame, celebrity and money. And, um, and I think this, you know, I think, after they do this for an extended period of time, you know, it's hard. It's tiring. Sometimes you feel like, uh, you you know, it's, um, you know, people have maybe thinner skins uh, than others and they start to chase where they're getting clicks. I mean, to me, it's a parody. Somebody posted a parody like this uh, when I was on Chapo years ago, we made a joke about like, how we would do a right wing turn. We always and joke about being the Trump supporting stoners. It was this was like in 2016 or 17. And I was like, yeah, no, I've thought about this for years. In fact, we used to do Michael and I used to do a fake right wing show on Halloween and on um April Fools. And the reason why we did it two times a year was because like we so desperately wanted a break. From doing, you know, like uh, it was yeah. like, like this is gonna be like a day off. Like we don't have to do anything. Like we, all the talking points are there. And um, <laughs> for a long time, my, the the joke was like, you know, this is how I do it. And, and even when I got uh, divorced, I'm like, this is this is it. This is my opportunity. When yeah. you get divorced, you're mad. You know, like like I'm an angry old divorce guy. And it starts with like, uh, you know. Uh, my, my wife's, uh, you know, making me, uh, my ex-wife's making pay child support. And uh, then like, it just like builds into like a broader uh, sort of misogynistic palette. And then I realized like, oh, you know, and that's how you, you might have- be the only man with the platform that dodged that bullet. I want you to know. I mean, people I would have sworn up and down were going to ride with the left until the end, like Matt Taibbi going hysterically, you know, right on a number of issues and then not even correcting course when the shrapnel hit Ken Clippin. I don't know. It was really ridiculous for me yeah. to watch that one. And I'm like, if Matt Taibbi's going to go down, like, how the f- who, who the f- 
Both. I mean, you and Ryan Grimm, you're like the only middle-aged dudes with principles, it feels like. Not middle-aged. <laughs> I'm older than Ryan. He would not appreciate you putting me in the same age uh, category as him. But, um, yeah, yeah I think it's life. just a different – I mean, look, there's a lot of – like in, in politics and in this sort of – and particularly in this space, but in general, there's um, – uh, a lot of people who um, have have like uh, like uh, socialization issues in some ways. I mean, I you know I don't I'm not the most uh, well socialized person, um, and I think there's you know often uh, people are in this space because there's some you know trauma often uh, that has taken place but honestly like i think that's like why you start to advocate for Talk about politics oh yeah just advocate yeah. for yeah, yeah for ad and advocate for you know um uh you know uh, specific groups of people and right. um and then sometimes that spins off and goes awry i mean um it's weird that you i mean i guess you do see it go the other direction a little bit like uh, i can there's a couple of people who have it's done like that, taking a poverty oath though. A lot of people don't want to do it. <laughs> it. It's not, it's definitely not as lucrative. I mean, I think like, you know, I have a theory about this whole, um, uh, tenant media money. Um, which is that the reason why getting a hundred thousand dollars per video four times a, a month did not <laughs> set, set up. I mean, that's what, that's what Ruben got. Ruben made $5 million in a year for doing four videos a month. And, and, and Tim pool made somewhere around that too, or some, you know, and, and I think the reason why it didn't set off any alarm bells is uh, because I think they get subsidized in one fashion or another. Um, maybe not to that amount, but, I think they must get, you know, situations like that somewhat on the regular. Um, because I mean, I can tell you Peacock, the, the choice, uh, you know, what they called it or the MSNBC on Peacock licensed the majority report and it wasn't anywhere remotely close to that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, I understood why they were coming to me because, I, if I could just give them my show, it's much cheaper than them having to produce one. And, um, you know, they, th there was some measure of confidence that I wasn't going to be, you know, that I could actually deliver a show because I'd been doing it for, you know, 15, 16 years or whatever it was. And, um, and even that money was not even remotely close to like, significantly I, I mean i think ruben made what i made in a year in less than a couple in less than a two weeks uh, off of that and Ooh. um and i'm you know like it's a daily show um and i think the reason why they took that money with basically like we need to see some photocopied sheet of paper that uh, purports to you know for Rabo Richard or whatever the guy's name was, Gerard Depardieu or whatever. Sounds um, like a extra in Twin Peaks. Yeah, exactly. Like just sort of some French Canadian actor. Um, uh, I think the reason why they took the money was because they were, it wasn't, you know, it was more than probably they had gotten in the past, but like the idea of like somebody coming in going like, we're going to give you a hundred thousand dollars, you know, for the next uh, six weeks to tweet out shit like this. I think that happens all the time. You know, there was that report that, um, semaphore did where, um, what's his face? George Santos was on a call and it was a, it was a zoom call where people were getting like $20,000 to tweet out and create content around Kamala Harris being a slut. Uh, check that report out. And, and, and I'm convinced like, oh, this shit happens all the time for them. Cause I've been doing this for 20 years and I have never, <laughs> ever 